just a simple man working on the land. So let's get into this, some other concepts of actual planning of what you're going to do. I think the very, very first question any prepper needs to ask themselves for their situation is, after they've decided what they're prepping for, is, should I stay or should I go? It, it depends on you. I can't dictate that to you. You have to evaluate that decision. There's a million variables that come into that. <clears throat> I know for me, I'm going to go. I have to. There's nothing of value staying in here. I mean, if it's, you know, localized, you know, blizzard, hurricane, things like that, I'm still going to have a home. But if the, you know, the shit hits the fan, and I, it's the common, nomen, you know, the, the common name that everybody's calling, and I kind of can't stand it because it's become so, like, popularized and commercialized. But if the shit hits the fan and it really gets to that point, get in the hell out, man. Big city's not where you want to be. Um, so, um, so you got to decide, are you going to bug in, are you going to bug out? <clears throat> um, think to yourself, is, is, is it most, what I'm preparing for, is it most likely going to be a temporary situation or is it a permanent situation? Temporary being Hurricane Sandy. Um, temporary can be a couple days to a couple weeks to maybe a month, something like that. Um, to a permanent, complete breakdown of society and government fails and we're back to the stone ages and it's your life will never come back to what it was that's my concept of a permanent you know a permanent change um do you own or do you rent i rent an apartment in the city it's not mine i don't really have much of an attachment to it it's my home it's really just a box where i store stuff and lay my head down um so I have no problem picking up and leaving it in a heartbeat. For some people, a homestead is all they have. It's all they know. And it might be the safest place, and it might be the best bet. So you have to evaluate those options on your own. Um, you know, And you have to consider you know, some other considerations, your, your geographical considerations, um, economic considerations, um, public services, you know, if you, if a major, let's say a major natural disaster hits, the community that you live in, are they going to be able to help you? Are they going to be able to support you? Um, are they going to be able to help clean up efforts? Things like that. Um, and I don't like spending a lot of time talking about it, um, but political issues of where you happen to live, whether they're local, state, what your views are on um, federal government, I'm not going to start that discussion. Um, I don't care to start it. Um, I have mixed views. I'm not strong one way or another. They are what they are. And that's it. Um, and then y you got to consider, uh, you know, high risk environments. Do you live in a flood zone? Um, do you live in Tornado Alley down south? Do you live in the Dust Bowl? Um, you know, do you live along like you know known hurricane paths? Do you live in blizzard areas? All these things, um, <clears throat> you know, n areas where there's known power outages. All, all these things are going to affect your plan as to whether you should stay where you are, whether sh you should leave. Um, you know, if you live, I don't know, if you live near a nuclear power plant. Maybe you wanna. Maybe part of your plan is to leave because if even if it's a natural disaster, if it's a terrorist disaster, if something happens, and that's a targeted facility, or there's a high chance of nuclear fallout, maybe your best bet is to leave there. You got to make these decisions on your own for where you live, um, and travel. The, the ability to travel. Do you have an easy way to bug out? Do you have, you know, do you have, do you own a car? Um, are you going to be relying on public transportation? Are you going to be throwing on a pack and walking off into the woods? Make those considerations. Figure those out now because those are all going to dictate how you prepare. The items that you buy, what you carry, 
how the rest of your prepping stages are going to go are going to be very dependent on these couple of things that I talked about, which all revolve around, am I going to stay here or am I going to take off and leave? That you need to start there because if you decide that you're going to stay home and that's whatever happens, you're going to stay in your house and that's what you prepare for and the disaster happens and your home is wiped off the map, you're up Shit's Creek. Just know that. Prepare for it. That's what prepping is, right? Um, where are you going to end up if you do leave? If that's your, you know, if that's your objective, that's mine. If something major happens, I'm going to leave. Um, and there's a lot of things, you, you know, friends, family, um, people who live, you know, 50 miles away, 100 miles away, across the country, the other coast, whatever it is. Um, maybe, these, you know, somebody's just willing to say, hey, you can come live here until we figure it out. Um, maybe you're going to be stuck in a hotel for a while. Um, <clears throat> you know, when Sandy hit here, the government came in and, you know, I, you know, I don't know how good they were at it, but a, a lot of people who lost homes were essentially just given hotel rooms and said, here, you live here and we'll figure out what to do later. Not bad. I think it's better than the next option, which is like a refugee camp or a FEMA camp. Um, they can be helpful. They can be useful. They're temporary. Um, you don't have much control over them, not like you would if you were, you know, staying at Aunt Millie's house. Um, but, that you know, it, it it's an option. Um, what about your car? I mean, if you're a single guy, you know, single person, you don't have a lot of resources with you, you got a decent enough vehicle, <clears throat> maybe you can live out of your car. It's a possibility. Um, if you are lucky enough, and if you are, I envy you, um, that you own other a second property, you own a cabin in the woods somewhere, um, even if it's just a even if it's just a hunting cabin. Man, God bless you. I wish I wish I had the money to buy, you know, five or six acres somewhere up in the middle of god's country and just you know that's where i'm going to be and you know see you when the fires burn out um you know and uh maybe you're just really gonna plan to just walk off into the woods and uh you know be, literally be a child of the land i mean that's a possibility um <clears throat> i have not mastered my plan yet of what I'm going to do. Um, it's very tricky when you live here in the city, and I don't have a lot of resources <clears throat> as far as family, friends, things like that, um, and the people I do have are here in the city, which defeats the purpose of leaving. Um, so i got to figure that out, but I mean, I, I, you'll see hopefully later on as I make more videos down the road, um, I am prepping to the level that I have the capability to walk off into the woods forever. Sure as hell I don't want to, but <clears throat> if I had to, I think I can. And I'm almost prepared enough to do that. Um, the biggest thing I can say, I mean, aside from actually obtaining things to be prepared, is information. Information's everything. Um, and that's what I'm hoping I'm, I can bestow upon you. If you're with me this far, I mean, we're half an hour into this video, and it's going to go on for a while. And if you're still here with me because you have an interest in this and you've found some value in, in what I'm saying, and at least it's thought-provoking to you and it's helping you make some decisions or some things you didn't consider. Um, but, it, I mean, the greatest preparedness tool that you can have is information. Tools, physical tools, whether it's, um, whether it's a bush knife or a canteen or fire steel or any of those things, they're all helpful, but one, if you don't know how to use them or use them properly, they're either not useful or they're useless. Um, and two, if you have enough information to a degree, information being education or just know-how, knowing how to use things, you can get away with a lot less and still survive maybe you can even get to a point where you can sustain um i think there's a lot of the concepts of bushcraft too which is you know 
minimalist minimalism and the elemental art of living off the land the way our forefathers did and there's a lot of people who practice that you know for most of all of written history nobody had electricity we didn't have cell phones we didn't have computers to make this video that you're watching me we didn't have that stuff um you know you don't need to go back to that time and live in that time but if you have the information and the know-how and the understanding up here of what it's really like and what it takes then you can make that happen for you if that's what you're preparing for and that's your worst case scenario um the great thing about it is it doesn't weigh anything you're not huffing it around no one can steal it from you you can share it but no one can steal it they can't take it away from you once you have that knowledge you have that knowledge it's yours um and it, it really, I, I really truly believe that it is more valuable than any physical object you can carry. Except for one, <clears throat> and that's only because for me, my glasses, <laughs> I would give up all the knowledge in the world to be able to keep something as elemental as my glasses, because if I can't see, point me. Okay, you get where I'm going with this. Um, but like everything else, it takes commitment, and, and I think obtaining knowledge and obtaining skills and learning whether they're learning crafts learning information about where you're going what you're doing whatever it is that you're trying to obtain that takes time um, I think that's the biggest time eater in preparedness and that's what's killing my time well not killing my time it's not killing it certainly it's very valuable to me but that's what takes up most of my time is learning and obtaining information to make better choices and better decisions about what I want to do and how I want to prepare. Um, and I mean, all I can say is, is that get all the information you can. And in this day and age, one, there's no excuse not to because it's all right at your fingertips, literally. Um, and two, for the most part, for the most part, most of it's free. Especially in this area, in the prepper community, most of the information is free. You don't really have to pay to go to classes. There's no degree. There's no college or university that's going to offer, you know, <clears throat> Bush, you know, preparedness 101. And it, 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 you can do all this on your own time if you're willing to invest the time. Um, excuse me for a second. I'm getting a little parched. Um. So let's talk about some terms that tend to float around uh, the prepper community uh, in terms of, uh, these are terms that are used to describe things and concepts interchangeably. All right, so I'm just going to rattle them off and we'll go through and I'll order them and I'll explain why I'm doing them. Okay, so there's EDC, everyday carry. That, that's where I got my introduction into this world was through EDC concepts, everyday carry. Um, up from that is um, get home bags, which is kind of more of the entry level, you're a responsible person if you carry like a get home bag, a handful of things that can like assist you in an emergency of some sort. Up from that is a bug out bag. That This is like the most, you know, the most kind of common thing that people heard of is a bug out bag or a 72 hour bag. Um, and then there's also, um, there's survival kits, which I think are very separate, um, you know, like, uh, very, like, elemental survival kits. Um, along with that kind of goes, um, bushcraft skills, they kind of intertwine with the survival stuff, um, because they're, they're, both concepts are based, based on, um, uh, minimalist uh, mentalities carry the least amount that you can to most greatly affect your survivability and your sustainability really um, and the last which is where I'm going to focus a lot of my time is what I like to call inch it's an acronym I'm never coming home um, and that's how I am essentially preparing my my world that's my plan um, that's what I want to be ready for because I think that that is, that is the all-encompassing element of all these other things. Um, in EDC, everyday carry is good for every day, day, 
being the operative word, one, one day. Um, you know, what do you carry with you? And, you know, it can be everyday carry. It can be everything from what you use in your job. Um, you know, you look, up e look up EDC or everyday carry on YouTube. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, from the pens, the tools you use at work, to, you know, your lighter, your cigarettes, your phone, your wallet, um, you know, whatever blade you carry in your pocket, things like that. Um, your get home bag is designed for like a one, two, maybe three day kind of thing. The idea is just the resources you need to get to your resources. Um, bug out bag, uh, I think a lot of people confuse what a bug out bag really should be with what they think they're going to get out of it. Um, I see a lot of people talking about bug out bags or 72 hour kits and they're packing things in them that are long term items that that's not i don't think i don't think that that's what that should be used for if you're packing a 72 hour bag the 72 hour bag is when hurricane sandy hits and you need to spend 72 hours four days maybe five days until the floodwaters recede and you're in a camp you're in a fema camp or you're in a hotel or you're at you know your neighbor's house down the street that's just above the floodwaters that's a 72 hour bag you're talking you know you don't need a, a camp stove and a hammock and a tent for a 72 hour bag you need extra clothes you need your toiletries you need your essential um your essential paperwork and financial information and identification and um, maybe a little extra food, a couple of games. If you know, if you've got kids, you need to bring, you need to pack games and things to entertain them. Those are things for a 72-hour bag. Um, a bug-out bag is a little more along the lines of like getting out of town, but there's an intent there that it's a, for a finite period of time that you're only going to need so much. Um, survival kits are. I don't think it's a finite period of time, but survival, we talked about right at the beginning what the concept of survival is. Survival is the tools that you should have with you to assure that as an organism, as a living organism, that you do not perish. And that's all a survival kit is for. Um, so in theory, it should be really, really small because there's only really, you know, Two, I can really boil it down that there's only two things that I think that the human body needs to survive, and that's proper nourishment, which consists of food and water, and really internal internal organism regulation. And for humans, that constitutes thermal regulation, keeping your core temperature at a certain, you know, at a certain level. Everything else is secondary to that. Um, so survival kits are very elemental. Um, bushcraft goes along with that but it just utilizes the concepts of living off the land doing it in a very uh, primitive or an old school way where um, just an example f to just to illustrate the point is you know understanding the use of a uh, setting an azimuth on a compass to walk to a certain point, whether you're in the woods or something like that, as opposed to a handheld GPS where you can punch in the coordinates and hope to hell that the satellites are working and that it's going to get you there. That's the difference. An inch bag. This is where I have focused my time. My, I, I, I can't, I can't afford the financial resources, the physical space. I live in a very small apartment in a city. Uh, I can't afford the space to have multiple bags. There's a lot of people who do, and I think it could be a great idea to have a get-home bag in your car, a bug-out bag at the door, uh, an inch bag in the basement, you know, all for different things. But that means that I know there's a lot of items that I have to have three of, and I have to keep all these different bags stocked. And then it depends on the situation, which one I'm going to grab, am I going to grab this one, where am I when it happens, blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. I need to be prepared to have everything all together in one kit that's that's my decision that's the way i decide to do it um and that just i've always kind of been that way i've always kind of in some form or fashion always been a, a all the eggs in one basket kind of guy you can hem and haw and argue all day whether that's good or bad there are obviously downsides to that concept but that's the way i've chosen to go um 
so that's what it is. I mean, I, you know, as time goes on and I make more videos and I can, you know, share with you guys in the community what I've, what I'm doing and how my kid's going, you'll see that, um, it's, I'm never coming home back. And it, that's exactly what it is. I am prepared at the fullest to never come home again. 